Welcome back. So, I have decided to make a video on why I think Mario games need a story. So I basically have a bunch of points written down here, but I'm just gonna give my own opinion and insight into why I think Mario games need a story to be enjoyable. Because it's not just the gameplay that matters, it's the story. The story is mainly the thing that gets people into it, gets people playing for like hundreds of hours. So there's only a few Mario games I've played all the way through during my life, one of them being Odyssey. And the reason for that is that Odyssey has a gigantic story, while well, something like 3D World on the Wii U or 3D Land on the 3DS just straight up don't. A game story can make or break how it sells, and while it isn't the discerning factor for most people, it does matter at least a little bit when choosing a game to buy. Mario games always have had some type of story, whether it be Mario going to Peach's castle and whoa, a freaking UFO dragging Peach's castle into the air or something like Peach gets taken by Bowser and Mario has to save her for the 5,000th time. So I've researched the best and worst stories in Mario games, and we're gonna look at a few of them to decide what makes a good story and what makes a bad. The first game on the good story list is Paper Mario on the Nintendo 64. Many find this game to be the best in the Paper Mario franchise as the series lacks a, a main story and good elements in recent versions of the game. It's weird because this game starts with the all too common Bowser takes Peach scenario. But the story evolves through the game and you are given partners to help you traverse through the different parts of the game and it's just a great story overall. You are also visited by star spirits. During the game, you release these star spirits from imprisonment by Bowser as well as trying to get to Bowser to retrieve the star rod to avoid Bowser making himself invincible. It's easy to see how many people look up to this game for a storyline as there is a great amount of story and dialogue in this game. Looking on the worst side, we have New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS. What makes this game so bad in people's eyes is the story, as it doesn't really have one. This game also has the way too common Bowser takes Peach and Mario has to save her kind of story, but unlike Paper Mario, there's not much else to it. This game has cool levels, but they can be defeated in a short amount of time, so it doesn't make sense to really care about this game at all. The first one was seen as a success because it was a 2D Mario on a handheld system. Many saw this as awesome since the series hadn't had a 2D game in a long while. This game wasn't received the same way because people expected more. Many saw this game as just a souped up version of the original with a new, one new power up and that's just a not good image to have if you're trying to be a full blown sequel. It's crazy to see just how little they did to change up the story with a 3 year difference between the second one and the Wii one which was just a better release of the original with multiplayer. It would make sense if these games released every year, but there was a three year difference. Maybe add more stuff to the game and try and make it feel more like a sequel than a port of a Wii game. And add a little more content. That's all, just, that's all we want. Looking back on the best side of the games, we have Super Mario Odyssey, and I did mention this earlier in the video, but I want to mention it again because of just how good the story is. You literally start the game on Bowser's ship. Like what other game do you start a freaking the first thing you see is Mario in a fight with Bowser. And then he gets thrown off a ship and his hat gets destroyed. What other game do you see that in? Literally no game. Then you go through all these worlds, finding all these coins, these moons. And you use Cappy to get onto different objects, which helps you swim underwater or hide as other Goombas or stuff like that. And it's just generally a good story. It helps the game a lot because with the good gameplay and the good story it all stacks up to a game that you can spend hundreds of hours in looking back on the worst side of the spectrum we have the original mario brothers 
And yes, it's the first in the series. It shouldn't have a good story, and it was made in the 1900s, 1983. I don't think that's the right year. It was made in the 1980s. Yet still, it's not that <laughs> good of a story. Literally, all you do is you go through different worlds, you, you defeat Bowser every time, um, you. Literally, the end of the game, you uh, save Peach. Yep. That's all you do. I get it. Yeah, it's the first Mario game. They can't do much to change, to make a story. It's on the original NES. It was underpowered. It was, a, it was just a bad game. No, I'm kidding. The game was good. I beat it on the 3DS. That's not something I want to admit because that <laughs> I have a NES Classic. I don't want, I don't know why I played it on the 3DS. But who knows? Maybe I can just forget about all this and um, forget that I ever mentioned Super Mario Bros. Because it has a horrible story. Yes, the game's a classic. It came out. It was amazing. It sold well. It it broke. It didn't break anything. Rescued the entire game industry from the infamous 1983 market crash. Yes, it's so important. But the story isn't good. It's it's such a simple game. Yes, I get it. But the story isn't good, and it, that's not a reason to hate it. I love the game, but you know. We're talking about stories here. That story's not good. Looking back on the good side of the spectrum, once again, we have Super Mario Galaxy. Now, Super Mario Galaxy is a beloved game. It's a classic. Everybody knows it. But it's just Nintendo did such a good job on the story. It's crazy. I played that game, and I was captured by the story and I just did not want to stop playing it was so weird there's a story inside the story and that's the story that's inside the story is Rosalina's backstory that's completely optional but you should definitely sit, well, like sit through if you get the game because it's totally worth it but I, I the, the story itself in the game is just amazing you're in space you're in space. You're Mario in space. You go to different planets. Sorry, I'm talking about the level design. You go to different planets. You go jumping through with stars and get launched all different places. It's amazing. But the story just freaking sells me. You start with Mario going to Peach's Castle, going to go to... I don't think he's getting cake. I think he's going to a party, but I, I can't be sure. And he, and literally he gets there. You see star bits flying down. You get to see uh, Peach's castle taken up in the air by a spacecraft. It's nice. Peach's castle being taken up isn't so nice, but it's like, what can you do? You're going to save her anyway. You already know it. Once you die, you come back, and then once you die for good, you come back. You, you're gonna beat. You're gonna beat the game, unless you just like throw it out your window or something. I don't know your life. Okay. I can't deal with any more negativity in games right now. So we're gonna end this by talking about what I think makes a good story in a Mario game. If it were up to me, I would definitely still use the Peach Gets Taken by Bowser mechanic, but add to it, like like Paper Mario did. Like, add different characters, add different storylines inside the story like Super Mario Galaxy did, add different abilities, add different unlocks that have something to do with the story and have their own backstory. Just add something it's just for me i want there to be enough of a story that it doesn't feel like too much 
but that it also doesn't take away from the gameplay and is also an amazing story. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching, if you did. Please like.